besides dead loads, life loads, point loads, and uniformly distributed loads. Environmental loads constitute wind loads, snow loads, thermal loads, earthquake loads, earth pressure loads, settlement loads. Others are gravity loads, water and ice loads. Wind loads. Wind loads are applied by the movement of air relative to a structure. Wind loads will become a serious concern during design and construction with respect to the height of the structure and the wind exposure. To avoid structural failure due to wind loads, where the dead weight of the structure is not sufficient to resist wind loads, additional structures, supports and fixings may be required. Bracing a tall structure can help resist wind loads. In complex wind analysis and design, computational fluid dynamic software will really be necessary. Snow load. This type of load is imposed by the accumulation of snow. This type of load is a consign in geographical regions where snow load can be heavy and frequent. The shape of a roof can determine the magnitude of the snow load. Snow falling on a flat roof is likely to accumulate, whereas snow is more likely to fall off a steep roof pitch. Snow falling from a rooftop can be dangerous. Heavy snow on a rooftop can be a problem. And this can be solved using heater cap, which is an electric heating system for de-icing. The amount of rain falling on a structure can become a problem if this rain will form ice left on the structure. This ice can become additional load. Earthquakes This is a horizontal load imposed on a structure during seismic activity. Design should ensure that structures do not fail if an earthquake occurs. Thermal loads. Structural materials can expand and contrast with temperature changes and this can exert significant loads on a structure. During the summer, most of the materials will gain heat, while during winter, most of the materials will lose heat. These constant changes on a material over time can cause structural failure like the expansion joint in bridges expansion joints can be provided at points on a long section of a structure such as walls and floors so that the elements of the structure are physically separated and can expand without causing structural damage Gravity loads. Gravity loads, unlike lateral loads, constitute the weight 
of the entire structure coming down on the foundation due to gravity. Settlement loads. After a structure is completed, the ground under it increases with vertical effective stress. Stresses can occur in buildings if one part settles more than another during the use of the structure. During design, the building should be designed to be flexible and not stiff. This will help to accommodate small settlement stresses. Underpinning can help to strengthen the foundation and fix the damage caused by settlement load. Earth pressure loads. This is pressure of the soil called earth pressure at rest. Soil has self weight and have the tendency to move laterally at times caused by moisture saturation. Retaining walls are constructed to restrict soil movement. In conclusion, environmental loads are all external loads acting dynamically on a structure due to the environmental exposure of the structure. Highway structures, roads and bridges are usually exposed to environmental loads and stresses. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. To locate and access other helpful videos, follow the link on the screen. I will see you in the next video lesson.